Art and technology have gone together for years, not just with computers, but also any art you see today is because the artist used the right technology at the right time, the right canvas, the right marble, the right tools at that time, and that's what's important. You heard a little bit about what a chief digital officer does at the Met. We work on all kinds of uh, digital uh, forward-facing, audience-facing uh, technologies. I believe the CDO is a transitionary role that won't be around forever because unlike a CTO, a CFO, and a uh, CMO, a CDO is likely to be someone that is unnecessary because CEOs are going to be themselves digital and they won't need the strategic advice that a CDO can provide. But I'm hoping that I will, it'll be after I retire from my working career. So that's a different conversation. I call the CDO chief listening officer. That was my role uh, in part here at Columbia, but also at the Met. And at the Met, that's a lot of listening. We're the largest tourist attraction in New York, and uh, we have a lot of folks who walk through the building, but also online, and trying to make the connection between both of them is absolutely important. Here are some of the things I've learned. The first is that technology is not new in the museum world. Some of you may be familiar with a punch card that's on the left, and that's actually the punch card that goes with our Georgia O'Keeffe cow and skull painting. So, Art and technology have gone together for years, not just with computers, but also any art you see today is because the artist used the right technology at the right time, the right canvas, the right marble, the right tools at that time, and that's what's important for all of us in the work we do as well. I went back and found the notes from an April 1967 meeting um, at the Met, a curator's meeting, and this talks about a Mr. Watson uh, helping us think about a computer at the Met. And you know who this Mr. Watson is, right? He is the founder of IBM. This would be as if Steve Jobs or um, oh, Steve Jobs came and said, this is a Mac, I'd like you to use it. Or Mark Zuckerberg coming to the Met today and saying, this is Facebook, I'd like you to use it. And what I love most is a reaction from one of our colleagues uh, who said, Dr. Blank doubts that a computer would be a time-saving device. And you can go back and kind of see all of this. It's, it's a lot of fun. What I've learned is that you've got to get the word out about what you do, and it won't be easy. The fact is that doing great work is not enough anymore. Doing great work isn't good enough. You've got to do much more than that. And that's where the idea of attention comes in a little, little more. So, um, some of you might recognize this gentleman. I talked about him once at a Bright conference. This is Sal Khan from Khan Academy. And we're doing a pilot project at the Met with him. The way you get things done at a big in institution is to do a pilot project. I sometimes feel we have more pilots than JetBlue. And uh, the pilot project uh, is to take our content at the Met and put it on his wonderful platform. He said something to me that distressed me. He said, that the vast majority of people whose lives I can change tonight, whose kids' lives I can change tonight, have never heard of Khan Academy and will never hear of Khan Academy. And I started to despair because if Sal can't give away his wonderful content, then what about the rest of us who are selling other things? So something for us to kind of ponder. I also learned you never know where good ideas come from. And uh, this is a sentence that you hear followed by someone saying, I, I learned something from my intern had a great idea. This is actually about our boss, Tom Campbell, who's the director of the Met. And he said, you've got uh, all these people, six million people come through the door, we give them free Wi-Fi, we don't collect their email address in any way, so let's start collecting them. And I said, it's a terrible idea. If you do this, very few people will give you the addresses. You'll get five addresses, four of them will be Mickey Mouse from uh, DonaldDuck.com, something like that. But because it was the boss, we ended up doing this project. The CTO and I, Jeff Spar and I, worked closely together, and we ended up with this very simple form that allows people to skip and connect if they don't want it. The upshot is that in less than, a f uh, in, in about six, seven months, we crossed 100,000 valid, non-duplicate email addresses. So what is the lesson there? That your CDO may not know anything that he's talking about, 
but also that I was embarrassed to, about this project. I wouldn't mention this to anybody because all the cool kids in the digital media circles were saying, never ask for anything for, uh, when you give out uh, free Wi-Fi. I believe that, by the way, but seeing this in action shows you that be open-minded and just because your digital guys and gals tell you something doesn't mean it's true. Another thing that I wanted to show you here is that our boss, uh, Tom, is on Instagram. We put him there instead of Twitter, and some people said to me, Sri, you're Mr. Twitter, why did you put him on Instagram? Because there's less drama on Instagram. Uh, I believe that unless you're a CEO like Mark Cuban, who loves the drama, that is not the place for most CEOs. Most CEOs should be on Instagram where they can, uh, they can really connect with audiences in new and interesting ways without all the hassle. When President Obama announced that he's doing Twitter personally, I wrote a column, worst idea ever. And I want him to run the country, not be worried about uh, uh, all the social media wars. Um, I've also learned that we have to be smarter about social media. And at the Met, we are on all these different platforms that you're about to see. Um, you can see we're on different social media platforms, but the numbers don't matter is what I've learned also, that you want to be on platforms that make sense for you. The other day I got a note from a curator. LACMA is on, LACMA, the great museum out in California, is on Snapchat. When is the Met joining Snapchat? I nearly fainted when I saw that note. But um, there are things like Snapchat guides for business, if you can believe it. So these things evolve. There's no reason to be first on any of these platforms. Uh, go to the, join the platform and it makes sense for you and your audience. Just by looking at this, you can tell that the platform that needs the most work for us is YouTube. We are very, very nascent on YouTube compared to the way people are using YouTube today. And um, the other thing I've learned is that Facebook is going right after YouTube. You may have noticed that um, YouTube videos play in a certain size inside Facebook, but things posted natively inside Facebook are much, much larger. And Facebook, as I said, is going after YouTube directly. We've started posting natively onto Facebook, and it has had an enormous impact on the number of views that come up. So it'll be interesting to watch that ride. We learned this dirty secret about social media. Almost everyone will miss almost everything you do until you make a mistake. And that's really important to keep in mind as you're kind of trying to think, think through all the stuff that you need to get done. What is your social media strategy? We doubled our social media team to two people, by the way, in, at, at the Met. Uh, so people have asked me, what have I achieved at the Met in 18 months? I say very little, about that size. Every exhibition now has a hashtag. And it isn't because I'm some genius. It's because our audience was demanding it. They were standing around tweeting, asking for the hashtag. So that's something also to keep in mind. I love this quote from Erica Anderson who says, if you're good in real life, you can be great on Twitter. But what about all of you at the Bright Conference? You're not just good in real life, you're great in real life. Well, if you're great in real life, you can be awesome on social media. And if you're, uh, however, bad in real life, you'll be awful on social. And that's something to, uh, to note. If you want to read these, these are tips I got from uh, watching Roger Ebert, who I never met. If you go into my slides and click on bit.ly slash Ebert, you will see, um, you will see the, the, the lessons that I got from, from Roger. You'll see here is our Temple of Dendor. And you may not be able to recognize this family here in the corner, but that's uh, the Seinfeld family. And I had never seen the kids grow up, but here they are. And this also tells you how things are changing, where celebrities are taking control of their own images and what they're doing with them um, online. So that's, that's something that I've noticed. We also noticed that the cultural landscape is shifting faster than any of us think. What this means is that it has an impact, no matter what field you're in, how people are thinking. And I recommend everybody read this thing called Culture Track from Laplaca Cohen. If you Google it, you'll find it. It's an, uh, a survey they do every two years about the cultural landscape. And what they're saying is that the audience is changing for everything, not just culture, but everything. And they're overstimulated, culturally curious, uh, culturally promiscuous, uh, I don't know about the other kind, uh, cynical, self-focused, but they are curious. The other thing we learned is that everyone wants a peek behind the scenes on everything we do, and I encourage that for all industries. 
Here is a, a beautiful a painting, one of the largest in the Mets collection that we just acquired. But instead of working on it in secret for a year and then putting it out, we've already started blogging about it and posting video and uh, text and photographs. And do you see that crease across the top right there? Does everybody see that? That's uh, a generation ago, the Met would have run away from that crease. Today, we embrace the crease, and we show you how we're fixing it in advance of your actually coming to the Met and seeing it in action. Here, you see Michael Gallagher, the, our head of conservation, painting conservation, using a very inexpensive swab to clean the baby's toes. And now you're interested because you want to see what happens to the rest of the painting. And when you come to the Met, you will see that in a few weeks, this painting will be unveiled. And if you're not on our Met mailing list, please go onto the website, sign up, and, and uh, please take a look. You should know that I gave up full free tuition for my children when I went to the Met, which was insane. Um, I it also half tuition anywhere in the world. It gets worse than that. It's also pre-tax dollars. Uh, some of you are saying, oh my god, yeah, I heard that. Um, so it cost me, as one of my friends did the math, $1.1 million to go to the Met. Uh, for you, you can go much cheaper. It's pay as you wish. <laughs> every time you visit the Met website, every time you follow us on any of the platforms, my kids eat. <laughs> they may not get to college, but they will eat thanks to you. So please, please check what we're um, doing online. I've also learned about mobile being important, more important than anything uh, we do. And, uh, or uh, more important than ever. And so we use three principles to build our uh, mobile website, uh, mobile web uh, site, as well as app that's on the App Store. Three principles, useful, simple, delightful. And I would urge you to think about those principles. Instead of trying to put the entire museum in your pocket, we just put a few items in our pocket. And just to give you a sense, an app that I've been talking about at Bright, I think the last three times I was here, uh, Dark Sky, Moves, Trip It, but I want to point you to that app at the bottom. Does anyone recognize that app? It's not the New York Times app. What is it? It's the NYT Now app, which is different. I deleted the NYT main app off my phone. And the NYT Now app is only 30% of the New York Times, but it's the right 30%. And I absolutely love it. I recommend it. I use it as a model for when you're trying to build apps that don't try to do the, everything you know and jam it into your, into, your, um, into your app. Think about using it in better ways. Here, as a result, we ended up in places that the Met usually doesn't hang out. Here we are between Instagram and ESPN on the best new apps on, uh, online. We also learned that the hardest thing that we ended up doing at the Met was not just building the app, but getting permission to put those stickers on George Washington's face, as you can see that right there. So as, we, as I, as I uh, wind, wind up here, I would, I would say that one of the ma main things that I have learned is that new projects are wonderful and important, which they are, and we're always doing new projects, but it's also important to think about repurposing, redisplaying, and, uh, re, uh, and, and bringing alive again things that you've already done and getting attention to the projects you've already done. You may not know this, but our 17 Van Goghs, I love saying that, and that may be the reason I went to the Met, our 17 Van Goghs are on display for the first time in a dozen years. And you will find no sign of that in any of our marketing material or on, on, on the banners outside. Why? Because we have 45 special exhibitions to promote. So you have to think about, are there ways in which we can get people to understand the things we're already doing and get attention to it? Just doing great work is no longer enough. We have to think about how we get people to see it. <laughs> <laughs>